of the school and head of the library committee, etc. And I'm uh, now director of uh, a course to, to, to um, project, pro programs. So one is undergraduate uh, natural sciences and the other is uh, bioinformatics and uh, new informatics, it's a master degree. And we are interested in all these things we have checked out <laughs> to, to hear and, and learn about, you know, about this, all the subjects. Thank you. Thanks. And next, Theophanes. Uh, uh, all of us uh, uh, today, I think, come from the same school of uh, science and technology uh, of the Hellenic Open University. I'm an associate professor there since uh, 2013. And for the last uh, three years, uh, I've been uh, the director of the educational content and uh, methodologies uh, lab, an independent unit of uh, the Hellenic Open University. So uh, apart from practicing uh, distance education, uh, I'm also interested uh, in this relation between the university and EADTU activities. Thanks so much, um, Nikos. Yeah. Um, my name is Nikos Karuzos. I'm a, a coordinator of uh, the quality assurance units of uh, our university. And uh, I have a PhD in computer science and I also teach in uh, the Hellenic Open University in the computer science department as a con uh, contractor or teacher. Um, Thanks. Nice. Hello, everybody. I'm Efthimios Zervas. I'm a professor at Hellenic Open University, as the other people here. And I'm also director of a master's degrees program called Environmental Design. So I'm here more to listen to your work than proposing things. Uh, Achilles is trying to connect, but he, 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 it's not uh, possible. So do you have any, uh, who is the host uh, of this event? He's trying I to- see he has joined. Okay, okay. He's already. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Okay. Good morning. We're we just doing a round of introductions. So please, uh, Achilles, you can shortly introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, Hi everyone, I am Achilles Kameas. I am a professor with Hellenic Open University, professor of uh, pervasive and mobile computing. Uh, I don't know what else is there to say. Uh, I've been following the ADTU activities for a long time now and trying to participate in uh, as many <laughs> actions as I can because you do a lot. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for, uh, for having this meeting with us. Yeah, thanks uh, for having having us and making it possible to have to make time uh, for us at such uh, short notice. Actually, um, we have uh, yeah all participants except for Dimitris, but he will join probably later. Um, indeed, we have also several um, uh, new actions for 2021. We can discuss that also later on um, e-assessment on diversity and inclusion, for example. Uh, these are uh, new developments in which you, we would like to have representation of Hellenic um, as well, but we can we can look at that at the end. Um, so maybe best that we uh, start with the with the first topic on the agenda, it's which is the uh, the COVID um, situation. Let me share my screen for this. I hope you can see this. Yep. Yes, it's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we have um, uh, looked into several surveys that have been done in 2020 on um, the COVID responses by universities in Europe in general. We have just um, also published um, a paper on this, which is even um, more specific than, than what I'm presenting now. It was only finished yesterday, and it is on our web page on the COVID response uh, from today on. But some of the figures are also mentioned already here in this um, in these slides. One uh, one of the uh, well, we can we, we can distinguish the first wave and the second wave. And looking at the figures of the first wave, the European Commission did a 
a quite a quick survey already that finished in May, uh, indicating that, uh, well, almost all 95% of the universities organized online distance education by, by May uh, as a consequence of the COVID crisis and were forced to have um, online examinations as well, uh, uh, formative and uh, summative assessments uh, uh, done. Um, which later on, when we are talking with universities and our networks, is one of the most challenging elements. And that's why we have set up this uh, special interest group on e-assessment to start by, by 2021, in which we are going to look closer in the, in the, the pros and cons of, of e-assessment and, and what is possible there. In the second wave of uh, COVID, uh, there was a difference that there wasn't immediately a lockdown. There was first, uh, the numbers were growing and then uh, we had to keep the distance between the students, which made it uh, uh, yeah, possible to have some students uh, on site, on campus, and, and having other students online, which resulted in kind of a hybrid and blended uh, models of uh, education in the COVID crisis uh, response. But already by September, October, again, the lockdown was uh, was. Uh, uh, announced again and then it was uh, fully online but uh, we already based it also uh, on the models of hybrid and blended education and response as well we have uh, we have looked into that by EUT and uh, came to some models on which we um, we will touch upon later on uh, what was the main lesson was that universities going online uh, in emergency remote teaching for, uh, was very well very much appreciated by students in first instance, but um, uh, also was expected to professionalize later on. So it was uh, accepted as an emergency um, remote teaching, keeping uh, also universities uh, the, uh, the possibility open to keep to their schedule, just uh, copying what was doing, was, what was done on, on site, on campus, in an online mode, meaning that you have also online lessons of 40, 50 minutes. Uh, which is uh, not considered to be as uh, quality online education, but as uh, accepted as an emergency remote teaching. Um, okay, at, at, at some point, uh, the, the appreciation turned over in, um, in actually in non accepting the, uh, the online education. We had even demonstrations by students asking for real education. <laughs> and not online education. This is not the publicity that we as um, um, we, uh, distance teaching universities want to have. Uh, it, is, um, uh, it is bad publicity uh, and uh, immediately also a call upon us as members of EDTU and EDTU itself to promote quality in online education and uh, making it possible uh, to have references and access for European universities to, uh, to what is quality in online education because, <laughs> and prevent more damage done on, on those. On the other hand, we also have to see, uh, have to um, realize what if uh, this pandemic had taken place 20, 30 years ago, uh, there wouldn't be any online education and education would have been um, completely uh, come to a stop, I guess, if. Uh, students would not be able to, um, to go to school. So we have to embrace uh, online education, but we have to make also the switch to, to quality online education. Um, in that sense, uh, there was um, uh, the Joint Research Center from the European Commission was asked uh, to do a study on this. Um, and they have uh, concluded that there are two key challenges for policymakers to, uh, to look upon. One is to make up for the learning loss, and one is to, to be prepared for professional uh, online education, to, to, um, to find ways of uh, professionalized online education. Making up for the loss has also to do with um, uh, um, yeah, students not having the full potential of education in emergency remote um, teaching. We saw in the Netherlands that 8% um, of students uh, more, so 8% more students um, applied for universities this year. Partly that is due to the fact that uh, students are not taking uh, an in-between year because they can't travel. So they immediately 
go to the university, which is uh, 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 one of the, the reasons for why there are more students now um, in university. But another reason is also that at secondary school, um, many more uh, passed their final exams because uh, universities could not, um, uh, let's say, uh, justify that the, the way of, of assessment and uh, doing examinations online uh, caused students to fail. They, they, they were, so they, they have more students, let them pass, giving them the benefit of the doubt. But that also means that uh, students uh, being less prepared for university. So there is a, um, a catching up to do at the university level on students that were not fully prepared uh, leaving secondary school. Um, so according to the uh, Joint Research Central Study, um, there needs to be um, uh, uh, a successful strategy of uh, giving follow-up on the uh, COVID crisis um, by professionalizing education. They do this at a more general level. I will come to a more institutional level uh, uh, later on. But uh, the EU study uh, indicated you have to guarantee access to internet. You have to uh, adopt proper virtual learning environments and think of broadcasting in countries where there is no um, uh, sufficient broadband or access for students to uh, equipment. You have to improve the availability of learning technology for students with special educational needs because they, uh, they could be um, a risk group of not uh, catching up. You have to support the teachers, but also the parents to, um, to help their, their children. Like I said, this is a more, as a more overall general level. When we're looking at elements of professional online education, the highest priority is for further educating the educators and digital didactics. In that sense, we have to build on expertise and experience that is already there. We have to use methodologically designed education and research-based uh, well-considered digital didactics. Um, the offerings have to include interaction, debate, dialogue, um, synchronous and asynchronous. It has to um, include activating education, engaging students with so knowledge value clips, serious gaming, student peer meetings, and so on. And professional online education um, is also about extending and enriching programs by virtual ability and using safe software. What not should be done the main method to not copy on-campus education, which was done in the emergency remote teaching. So we have to bring forward this message to universities uh, European-wide, but not only the message, but also the expertise connected to this. So we have to share the expertise that is there. There's a wealth of information and research and good practices in Europe. We have to face the challenges of digitalization. We cannot um, opt out in a sense like we postpone these decisions like uh, Going online uh, has a lot of privacy issues. E-assessments are uh, challenging. Um, all these um, elements were postponed uh, because uh, uh, these are challenges um, uh, universities do not like to, to face, but now they have to be faced in, in professionalizing online education. And we have to start a discussion with institutions and also with companies who often deliver the innovation that is needed to uh, come with proper uh, supporting systems uh, to support your staff and your students. Like I indicated before, um, the expertise needed in response to the, to the COVID crisis is um, uh, addressing three models, uh, depending on the full lockdown or having the ability to have some of the students still on campus. When you have the ability to have some students still on campus, you can think of formats of synchronous hybrid learning. This is based on the on the setting that uh, you you combine um, virtual presence by um, uh, many screens in your in your uh, campus uh, facilities uh, in combination with students being there physically. Um, this is synchronous learning still that you uh, as a teacher combine the uh, the presence um, physically or virtually of your students. In blended, you can com uh, combine asynchronous and synchronous um, modes of teaching and different ways of um, yeah, using tools of uh, online, uh, online tools with face-to-face -face tools of education. And then of course, our online and distance uh, learning. Currently, we have submitted a, um, a project proposal for that 
to the European Commission call. I know Hellenic has also responded to that call on the uh, on the COVID crisis that was due in October. Um, what was it called again? This call, well, it had had to do with, with um, the digital readiness of universities, and uh, we built our submission uh, on these three uh, on, on uh, bringing expertise to European universities on these three formats. Affected by the COVID crisis was also mobility. Uh, already a study uh, uh, done in March 2020 showed that two thirds of the universities saw the outgoing student mobility impacted by the COVID crisis. And the Kramer Group did a study uh, that was finish, finished in May on their 40 universities that indicated that 70% of their students um, uh, were not mobile anymore. and uh, went for programs on the virtual mobility. Although they had also to conclude uh, on the Kramer Co report that it was uh, neither virtual mobility nor the virtual, virtual international classroom have become a uh, common practice. And that has also to, to do with that um, universities uh, are not familiar with the virtual mobility practices and, and possibilities. Uh, also, it takes time as you need to make bilateral agreements between universities to do so, but maybe in the next phase to be prepared, we need to, to work on these bilateral agreements and they have a full um, coverage on virtual mobility later on on the agenda. Okay, the next steps um, after the Corona crisis is that every educational institution needs to reconsider its own educational model including professional digital education. Most urgently, you have to educate the educators in the use of digital didactics and understanding what quality in online education is. The educator itself, him or herself, will shift tasks even more maybe from provider to developer. And we need to evaluate and innovate uh, our education over and over again. So we have to build in um, evaluation systems to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, on this uh, web page, you can find um, it's on our Empower, uh, Empower uh, Higher Education um, website. You have a dedicated web page on join, join online teaching now for the Corona crisis. Uh, we are going to add today this report that is done by EDTU on uh, figures. You, you can find much, uh, much more figures there on the Corona crisis impact on European universities and instruments. And uh, as you may know, we did a call on, um, on good practices and expertise in relation to online education. And this, this is just one of the pages in which you find the resources uh, linked to that. Um, one other reference I would like to share with you is that we have launched a MOOC on uh, organizing online education in combination with campus education in, uh, under the EMBED project, European Maturity Model for Blended Education, which is published under, under this website. I will go later on to this uh, on quality assurance, but first I would like to, to reflect with you on the, on the COVID situation and what, what this meant for uh, the Hellenic uh, University. I have to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Hello, Dimitris, welcome. I now see that you join as well. Yeah. May, may I, uh, I have two questions for you, George. May I? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, I don't know, but I think in Sweden, uh, the universities were still open during the first and the second wave. Do, oh. you, do you have any information on that? Uh, no, not, uh, not specifically, uh, but indeed, yeah, they were still open. Um, so they must have uh, or continued education as usual or went for the uh, the hybrid or blended model. But I don't, uh, I have no figures specifically on the Swedish okay. uh, Situation. Yeah, sorry. Okay. And the second one, uh, do you have some uh, figures uh, about the um, all this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, disapproval uh, disapprovement of uh, uh, students about distance education? Um, you have some, some questionnaires or, some, uh, or let's say uh, a feedback with uh, with numbers. Uh, let me check the. I would think uh, that, uh, for example, ASU, yeah, the European Student Union, would have, would have done so, or maybe at uh, at each university level, um, it could be done so. I only have the the, the overall um, perspective of students. 
uh, in the first months of appreciation and uh, but uh, uh, already starting at the second wave um, it turned it turned around in uh, disapproval uh, uh, when they saw that this is going to take much longer so the the um, going online having uh, sessions of 40 50 minutes by your teacher just like uh, campus uh, education was only accepted um, figuring that it would take only two three months okay. but for the longer term uh, and not but I, I we can look up for, for these figures you know, Pete, yeah, you. yeah. Um, uh, uh, for sure uh, uh, in the second wave uh, mostly uh, there was the kind of uh, protest of students and that uh, there was perhaps also low quality distance education sometimes provided uh, by their universities as uh, as uh, many teachers continued their lessons as if it were, were uh, ex cathedra uh, lectures. Yeah. But the, the experience of students is more complex at, in, at least at the, at the first wave. What we have seen in many countries and at many universities that's not reported only in one country or in one university, that is that uh, students um, um, were more successful in examinations. Uh, so more students passed um, more subjects in the batch on, on the bachelor level. And also uh, the quality of thesis work and um, paperwork was higher in the first wave. So actually one can say that uh, after all, the, 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 the first wave was beneficial with regard to student progress and student success in, in many uh, universities. And of course, uh, uh, some, some say easily, this was due to the new methods and so on. That's, I, I, I don't think that was the case. I think uh, uh, the reason for that, that that's, that's, uh, perhaps was more that students were, were focused, more focused on, uh, on education and that less uh, there was less in their environment to do, distract, distract them uh, from, from learning. So that, that, that was perhaps the main reason. So the, they had nothing to do but to study. And, uh, and, and, and so, uh, so uh, uh, in Italy and Belgium and in other countries as well, and Finland and so on, uh, this was reported. Yeah, we have figures uh, in this report I referred to. I, I can send it to you. Um, oh, I have. Um, there, in these figures, you see that um, there is some difference between students of uh, uh, um, socioeconomic uh, differences. So students that have um, uh, uh, a lower socioeconomic position, uh, so to say, uh, have more problems because of um, yeah, equipment problems, but also a support at home. Um, so the, there are some figures on that. Uh, um, that there is a, that diversity between students and catching up in online education is uh, affected by the by the COVID uh, pandemic. Yeah. If, if I can have this report, because I asked you that question, because uh, we run at uh, Elena Copen University a huge uh, questionnaire this summer with about uh, 3,000 students uh, answered, I think. Uh, we were, uh, the other um, colleagues here uh, don't know that. We were five people from the four uh, schools of uh, Elenicop University and we asked the questionnaire. Uh, we have a collaboration with the Institute, Institute of uh, Mental Health of United States and uh, the, we took a questionnaire from them about the social impacts and uh, uh, psychological impacts of the COVID and why did uh, a questionnaire about education. So we ran this questionnaire this summer with about 3,000 uh, students answered uh, now on Tuesday we will uh, start to um, explore these results. So we don't have, I don't have the figures yet, but uh, most of students, uh, let's say, very quickly answered that they had a, a really great impact. They, they they saw an impact of uh, of COVID on their education, but degrading the education. They feel that education was worse than before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I wanted just to, to, to know if you have some other figures just to compare with our results. I think in a month we'll have the, the final results and we submit it for a paper and probably uh, do it again from the second wave, probably in January, and see if there is a difference. So I will be very interested to, yeah. to, to have some results in other countries if, uh, if there is uh, such uh, questionnaires. Yeah, we make a, a note on that that we can... Um... Thank uh, you very much. See what we can get from other members also. Uh, Dimitris? 
George, can, can I ask something? Uh, I am uh, concerned about the source of the data uh, that you are quoting. Is that data from conventional universities that had to switch to uh, online education, whichever way they call it, or is it data uh, gathered from uh, open or distance learning universities which had that as business as usual anyway? I mean, I, I would imagine it's the first. It's the first, yeah, from OECD, yeah, traditional universities, yeah. I yeah. think that this is going to be a gap huh, that uh, we need to address. I, I, a lot of universities, of conventional universities, just stood up and said, we uh, handled it pretty well, uh, which is not the case, whereas mostly uh, distance teaching universities uh, they had a business as usual uh, procedure. So we may have our ups and downs, but uh, not, uh, you know, uh, huge gaps in how we deliver the uh, education. For conventional universities, I wouldn't be surprised if students uh, are, uh, you know, all over the place and uh, questioning the approach. Yeah, yeah th that's why uh, we considered by, by collecting data from our members, but uh, we are not uh, representative for the COVID crisis because <laughs> we are all online uh, university. Um, but uh, uh, it would be interesting if the members could send reports from the national uh, 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 coverage, national surveys. Uh, the thing is, is that I think we have a specific position here as leading universities in um, online and distance education to share our expertise and show our leadership in this field, but also uh, guarantee that um, uh, the publicity of online education is not uh, affected by these negative um, uh, uh, well, visions uh, or experiences by, by the students, because that is what is reaching the papers, that quality, not, that online education is not, is not quality or not the same uh, yeah. at the moment. No. I, I, have, uh, I have a comment on that and, and, and also a question to uh, Hellenic Open University. Uh, so as far as, uh, as um, Conventional universities are concerned. Um, for the first time, they embraced massively the notion of distance education. So that was never never the case up to now. So now distance education also in, uh, in, in uh, traditional universities is a notion and is, uh, is considered as a mode of teaching, uh, which is uh, yeah, more accepted now, I think, than beforehand. I mean, by teaching staff and by the management of traditional university universities, and that, that's 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 nevertheless very important. And also, it's also important with regard to the status of open universities in Europe. I think. Um, and I have a, also a question to Hellenic Open University. In some of the open universities, we, there was they reported uh, some of the open universities in our membership reported higher student numbers uh, in distance education and there in in the open university. So student numbers uh, increased in the Open University UK, for example, but also in other Open University. Was that, uh, was that also the case in Atlantic? I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's not the situation. Uh, I think we have a stable uh, enrollment, um, rhythm of enrollment. For our school, but overall, the university increased uh, its numbers. So statistics tend out to be, uh, it's not very easy to compare because we have new uh, programs coming in uh, each year. So uh, up to a certain degree, it is expected that we increase the number of uh, enrollments. Uh, but uh, there was a notable uh, difference in the numbers of students. It was more observed also in the Hellenic Open, uh, Open University overall. Uh, I just received the, these numbers yesterday because we have a similar work. Uh, we had 13,000 students last year against 11 the uh, year before and 8 the year even before. So we have a, an increase. But uh, we have to uh, take into consideration that we had a, a, a huge decrease on the demands. For example, uh, in the four or five years ago, uh, we had uh, 50,000 demands in a university. Then we felt 
to 25 and then to uh, 14 and then nine. So we had a very significant decrease in our uh, demands uh, to our university. And now we have a small increase. Uh, and uh, this is uh, due to several particularities of open university increase. So we cannot really uh, say that there is an impact of COVID or not. We have other parameters more strongly influencing this, uh, this decrease and increase. And did uh, universities in need of expertise in online education approach um, Hellenic for expertise in this field, for collaboration? Uh, well, you know, uh, we employ uh, colleagues from other universities in Hellenic Open University, so they actually they don't have to approach us, <laughs> but they, already, they are already working with us. Uh, uh, yeah. This is our model. Uh, but uh, I would like to comment a little bit on, the, on what was said before, now that I've uh, on the floor. Uh, the first thing uh, I wanted to say is that all this response of the students, especially during the second crisis, I think follows the, the response is in line with the response of the whole society uh, for the second uh, wave. It was, I mean, unexpected or not, we didn't believe that it was going to happen. So there was, I, I think there was also some emotional, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, down, uh, going down, I uh, um, cannot find the word now. Uh, that can also justify this negative uh, um, uh, response towards online education. I think it was a negative response towards everything. So education was one of the uh, also one of the things. Not that it, just, it justifies by itself the negative response, but still uh, we should uh, take this into account. I think in any analysis we do the, the, the whole uh, response of society. Uh, I think in the first wave, the approach was, oh, we are going to make it, we're going to be strong, you know, we'll get over it. It was so, sort of something new that was happening. And as long as it wasn't affecting us closely, I, I, I can't say, I don't want to say it was fun, but it was a challenge that we all wanted to get over. Yeah. Uh, and it happened in spring, summer was coming. So that psychologically, all of this helped. We knew that it was going to end somehow in, in summer or we hoped and then happened. So we were all happy and then it came back. This was not expected, so I think that psychologically this brought us uh, down. Uh, second, uh, my second observation has to do with the numbers of uh, HOU of Hellenic Open University. Uh, we must uh, keep in mind that Greece went through a very big financial crisis during the past years. This affected uh, our numbers. Uh, we are uh, the only university in which uh, students have to pay to, in order to study, so uh, they couldn't afford to pay. On the other hand, some of them found the free time to study during crisis. So it was like a mixed reaction, but um, mostly the crisis took, took its toll and uh, our numbers, our figures went down. Then Greece started, uh, Greek economy started to recover. Then we, that's how we, that's why, and in combination with our new offer, we saw the numbers go up again. Uh, so it's, as uh, my colleague, uh, Mikey said, we have to combine uh, both factors uh, to, to explain uh, why the, we have we had an increase in enrollment in uh, in our university uh, this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, certainly the spirit the spirit in the beginning of the year was different from uh, the second half and yeah. affected it as well. Yeah. Uh, may I ask something else? Uh, what about your feelings about distance exams? Because uh, in Hellenic Open University, we had. Uh, of course, distance exams, as most of other universities. Uh, but there is a, a question about uh, if these exams are really uh, the best way to continue the future. So do you have some uh, feedback from other universities? Because uh, asking to other universities in other countries, they say that, OK, we had the exams, distance exams uh, uh, this summer, but we are not really very comfortable about that to continue next year. Yeah, so, but, but this was more mostly from the conventional universities. I don't have a feedback about what's going on on the distance universities. Yeah, in general, the, the, the responses that we received were that uh, there were a lot of doubts about the um, distance exa examinations, if they were um, uh, guaranteeing uh, the right person, of course, to be there, uh, or uh, students um, didn't want to have um, proctoring on, online, that they were, that, that they were uh, supervised um, that way. So uh, there were a lot, a lot of difficulties also on the privacy issues and so on. 
uh, at this moment at the European University of the Netherlands, the, the examinations are done um, at the study center. So, so the, uh, it's not done online. Um, uh, so there, there, there are not so many experiences on doing it fully online, the, the assessments or the examinations. Uh, and um, uh, that's why we have set up this special interest group on e-assessment to compare and map what was being done at this moment, uh, where it is uh, accepted or what, what is done to make it acceptable, um, but also uh, uh, address all the, the elements uh, that are there for, for, for discussion because there was a project called Tesla. I don't know if you're familiar with the Tesla project that, that spent, uh, I think, one or two million on, on, uh, on online assessment uh, tools and getting it um, rolled out uh, further. But uh, at this moment, the Tesla is not used and um, the tools are not used European-wide. But I know there will, some, there will be some experimentation in Yvaskula in Finland with it. But it's, uh, it's still uh, very difficult to, um, uh, to implement. And with this special interest group, we want to explore what are the main barriers, um, why isn't it implemented, and uh, what would be the next step. But also indicating what is the most acceptable model of, uh, of e-assessment at this moment. But I understand you have at Atlantic um, good experiences with uh, uh, online assessment. Hey, sorry, could you repeat the, the Tesla um, uh, um, development? Came yeah. from... So in Tesla, they um, they explored uh, uh, how to guarantee that you are with the right person doing the examination. They had a four system uh, approach on that. That was um, uh, a, a software that could indicate that it's the same person typing by the speed of typing, using the, the ah, word okay. typing, huh? this, this um, uh, kind of a fingerprint of mm -hmm. who's typing. Uh, there was also some uh, biometrics like uh, the uh, eye um, uh, identification, uh, the webcam, um, also in, in the way people can gather information, uh, <laughs> which is allowed and which is not allowed yeah. during an examination. So they explored all this uh, at a, at a, with many experts, um, but uh, at this moment, it's not a system that you could just pick and, and roll out in your own university. So we're going to further explore how to, to use uh, Tesla. Uh, we had an evaluation of uh, proctoring uh, tools and uh, software being made uh, available, commercial solutions, uh, but uh, it was... Uh, uh, not uh, only a problem of using the software, it was a problem, as you mentioned, of uh, um, uh, protection of uh, data. Um, most of them relied on uh, uh, monitoring and recording of the session. Mm -hmm. So it was based on uh, proctoring and uh, uh, recording of the camera uh, view. So it was rejected already from the beginning. We, we, we could not uh, support it. Um, so there, apart from the technical issues, there are also the legal issues. Indeed. Yeah, we, we see that also students uh, refusing to be, uh, to, to having supervision via the computer or uh, keeping records of their well as asynchronous uh, proctoring, um, uh, that, they, um, that they refuse to, to have this data all collected and so on. Yeah, so, but we want to, to map that what is happening in, in Europe. So we will do a call for the special interest group in, uh, in January. Uh, so it would be very interesting to have your experiences also and some, some representative of Hellenic also taking part in this uh, special interest group. I Just to mention one thing, uh, if I'm, I may. Uh, in Greece, we have a, a particular problem with the parallel education systems. It starts from uh, really from the very beginning and uh, the finish of the university. It means we have private schools that add people for the for the education, and uh, this is a real problem in Greece. And we have uh, a lot of schools helping, but not only helping, but doing more than that uh, to our students. Uh, for example, we have some problems with the dissertation thesis uh, when the, we discovered that uh, several times that there are not there are students that are performing this thesis, but other people helping them. So the, in Greece, this is a particularity that we, we try to take into consideration. It's not so easy 
the problem is not so high uh, sometimes, but it, there is a problem. But this is particular in Greece. Uh, there are no other countries, uh, as far as I know, having this problem. So uh, with, let's say, with all other problems of other countries, uh, in Greece, we have also this specific one, but this is just to take, uh, to make things more complicated. Yeah. Uh, the private institutions providing education in Greece is probably a larger fraction of the economy than compared to Western Europe. But I recall Liz Mar, uh, uh, the outgoing president of EDTU, quoting a couple of days ago in a meeting that uh, uh, during this COVID uh, season, uh, most universities detected uh, an increase in plagiarism uh, uh, incidents, uh, either in exams or, uh, uh, or let's say, homework. So I can imagine that people are, you know, the attitude is throughout the same and problems tend to be the same. And I can imagine that, uh, you know, these legal issues that George uh, said about people reacting negatively to them being uh, recorded, uh, well, for some countries, it may be an option, and for some others, it may not be an option. Uh, you know, in Cyprus, uh, they, uh, the local uh, uh, data protection agency uh, uh, cleared uh, the right for the Open University in Cyprus to record uh, the um, exam sitting sessions. So it may be a matter of how you present the case and how the local authority interprets the European regulation. So it, it's a complex issue. It's not, a, you know, a, a same rule for everybody. No, and it sometimes has also to do with um, the, the, the contract, so to say, the agreement between the student and the institution on when entering the institution, what you accept at that moment also, eh, that the institution ha uh, captures of you as, as, as data and so on. So maybe that, that needs to be, um, reconsidered as well uh, when we have new tools and new methods uh, to be used uh, from conventional universities going online, for example, or, uh, uh, or online universities go doing more online assessments, that these um, agreements also need to be um, updated and accepted by, by students. Uh, it's something to be explored in, uh, in this special interest group. There will be a lot of um, uh, related topics uh, to, be, to be addressed. Uh, I don't know, Pete from KU Leuven, do you, do you know? Oh, sorry, do Can you I know? also add a comment there? I mean, uh, with respect to what you said about uh, what's happening in the Netherlands, where the uh, universities are allow allowing their students to sit the exam at study centers, uh, that's part because of the government allowing the universities to organize exams in such a way. For example, uh, uh, even if, uh, you know, the, in Greece we have, let's say, a more temperate climate and uh, we could, in principle, do that. Uh, it's a government-level decision that uh, uh, university activities have to be suspended in uh, classes. So it's not a matter of uh, asking students to come to study centers because study centers uh, are not there for the taking. Yeah, yeah, and, and in some countries, I know that uh, it's by law not possible to have to accept online examinations. So that uh, that's also uh, so mm -hmm. it differs very much <clears throat> in the country. Yeah. Yeah, and in, in uh, some of these countries like Italy and France, the law has changed to, uh, to allow universities to take online examinations. And then, of course, there's the issue for the universities, how to, how to organize these online examinations and how to pre prevent cheating and plagiarism and so on. This is a really a, a big problem. And uh, uh, our impression is that all of our members are, are coping with this now with uh, the reliability, and that's the question of reliability of, um, of uh, uh, online examinations. And um, so um, that will certainly be the subject of, uh, of the special interest group, which will be created. Uh, next to that, uh, there were also some questions uh, on behalf of some of our members about a new examination culture, which is a different issue. That's more about the validity of the examinations. So our online examinations really uh, cover uh, the objectives and the, uh, the learning outcomes uh, uh, of the different programs. So that's, that's another thing. So and so other forms of, of examinations <coughs> uh, can, can or considered, let's say, like, for example, open book examinations and so on. 
So, but these are more complex issues. Uh, the, the foremost, most important issue is about the reliab reliability of examinations online. Uh, do you have some uh, data on the um, how the open universities in Europe uh, perform the, the, exam the exams uh, this summer? No, no, we hope to get these from this uh, special interest group yeah, to map uh, uh, what's going on and compare. Yeah, and it will be interesting to have this data. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we will collect this data and, and we expect that uh, we will see uh, things we don't know uh, yet. Huh? So new things, uh, new methods, also new issues and also risks taken by universities sometimes and they are aware of it. Yeah. Okay, um, anything else on the COVID? Uh, may I say something uh, regarding the online examinations? Uh, we have conducted some studies, a, a research um, that uh, uh, that deals with um, uh, some questionnaires uh, with um, with students and uh, teachers. Uh, we have a big study that in, in which uh, ten thousand students uh, uh, were participated in. And we have some uh, useful res results about the satisfaction, if there is satisfaction. Um, and, and now we are uh, writing a, a paper about this. I, I, I can share, if, if you like, I can share some uh, some uh, screens. Yeah. If, okay, that's brilliant. Yeah, please do. We, we, we will learn. This, uh, this is a, in general an infographic about the participation we had. We had uh, about 9,000 participating students. Their the satisfaction were um, in, in, a, in a nice uh, per percent. Uh, about the uh, integrity of uh, examination, students uh, state that they are actually satisfied, about 84%. And 78% uh, of our students uh, state their willingness to or their desire to Re, uh, uh, to, 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 examine, to be examined in the future with the same uh, way. Uh, here is uh, some, uh, some detailed uh, data. Here you, you can find the overall satisfaction of our students. Uh, this is a liquid light. Um, uh, um, uh, scale uh, from one to five. We have about four, um, uh, three to four uh, uh, values uh, about overall satisfaction, about the integrity assurance and the desire to be examined remotely in the future. Um, here are the, the um, so, some data about um, uh, the available time, the examination method. Here we have we have a problem with available time. St students say that um, um, the time was not enough. And uh, some interesting data here about the method of the examinations. Um, we have uh, noticed that uh, the oral examinations uh, um, uh, was um, too stressful for, uh, for students. They are not. Uh, they are not uh, prepared to 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 be examined in a, in a free oral examination. So 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 the uh, our suggestion is to for the next examinations is is to is to make a a more strict context uh, of of the of the oral examination uh, to to make some uh, to make some rules about uh, how a teacher can uh, can examine with oral examination their student. So um, this uh, can be sent to you if, if you like to, to help you about the student satisfaction. And we have another research about um, that, that concerning student, uh, teacher's satisfaction. Uh, in, in which uh, the results are um, I think uh, same that 
students one. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, however, this is a um, student's view, so you cannot easily extract the uh, best pedagogical practices uh, only from the experience gained. Uh, for, for example, I was a little bit puzzled by the event that um, they were the best score was received with respect to the integrity of the examination process. Mm. They, they had problem to, problems to mention uh, regarding the organization of the examinations, the support they received, everything. But when asked about the integrity of the examination, it was the best uh, score they provided to the system. I'm not convinced by that at all, I have to say. <laughs> so. If I may add, uh, I, I, I really played on that and I cheated on my exams putting a specific uh, uh, exercise to verify if the students were cheated or not. And I had uh, 78 students and over, overall on the, the 78 students, the 76 were cheated. So I'm really not convinced about these results. I don't know what the professor will say, but uh, I had a, a specific, let's say, very, very intelligent system to check that. And uh, I discovered that almost except two almost all students were cheated. So I'm not really convinced that uh, people saying that the results are, uh, the integrity of results is high. And discussing with other people, really we have some problems to accept that. Okay, it was coronavirus, a pandemic, so it was, uh, uh, we had no other uh, opportunity, no other way to perform that. But uh, saying that uh, the majority of students, uh, oh, no, Saying that exams are okay, I'm not very convinced that uh, we have to accept it like that. No. We need some more work on that. Uh, uh, we, we, as, I, as I said, we have conducted uh, similar uh, uh, research uh, with uh, teachers, so yeah. I, I can I can see yes, uh, I can show you yeah. I can show I, I can share you a, a, a first impression of our teacher in, in com compared to with uh, our students, but this uh, this slide is in Greek. Uh, so, uh, as you see, there are, there are not many, uh, there are not a significant uh, differences about uh, their, uh, their, um, their satisfa satisfaction. Uh, about the integrity, this is a diable of the, the, the integrity. Uh, you can see that teachers are uh, most um, are a little bit. Uh, uh, nature in this question so the, the other questions are um, I, I think are all, all, almost uh, in, in the same um, in the same uh, way uh, okay okay that's, that's, that's it. thank you thank you and to one final uh, additional remark uh, was that uh, we were not um, contacted by universities uh, to provide support, but we were contacted by the Ministry of Education to provide support to schools, to um, okay. secondary school education, because it was the first time that they had to uh, implement distance teaching. So we had to develop a training uh, session um, for... Uh, uh, um, professors at the educational system. Okay. One point I'd like to raise with uh, respect to what Fanny said about being contacted by other universities to provide support. And, and that has to do with what Achille said, that uh, a lot of our tutors are already professors in other universities, is that these colleagues mostly had to improvise in their universities. Uh, while uh, at the Hellenic University, our student groups are fairly small, 10 to 30 people, that gives you you know, ample room to do a decent supervision or, uh, you know, to spread out an oral exam. Now, if you have a class of, uh, let's say, 200 or 300 people studying, let's say, algebra or uh, differential equations or physics, uh, it's quite a, a tall order to organize an exam for 300 people all by yourself and your postgrads. So uh, I think that uh, we delivered, let's say, a more uh, predictable level of exam service to our students compared to conventional universities. 
Uh, and I don't think there was much we could really do to, uh, to advise them. But the, um, I think the, uh, for schools also the, the, I guess that was, um, uh, uh, was that a recorded training that you could give to the schools that they can um, use over and over again? Or was this a live? A session? MOOC actually. Uh, it, it was delivered um, as a MOOC and now they are uh, running a second round, including uh, synchronous education to, and support to yeah. uh, teachers. That will be carried out in the next months. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, uh, I will hear that also from other countries that the um, the open universities were approached to uh, with the expertise, which is also, well, um, for, uh, it's to justify their their existence, um, their, their positioning as a uh, as an expertise that is really needed. Also, so for some, it's really um, an added value to to uh, to play that role, as it is often often questioned. As in, uh, uh, with, with the um, unique position that open universities have in, in the country, um, the uh, I, I, we saw also publications here in the Netherlands from the, uh, the the rector of the open university. He was uh, most often asked about the COVID crisis and how how should universities respond. And so, so you really see the tension uh, in the countries for the open universities and their expertise in this sense. But uh, the, the other thing is how to how to exchange and transfer this expertise and keep it uh, keep the attention also uh, on that. And that is why we have also this post COVID response and um, this project application that we have done under the name um, uh, Digital um, uh, that is uh, well hopefully uh, approved by by February. And I know Hellenic has also submitted one or two applications under this digital ready readiness. Um, um, called by the, by the European Commission. Okay, so um, is there anything else? Uh, in, in, well, everything has to do with the, <laughs> can be linked to the COVID, of course. But um, uh, the the next point in the agenda is uh, quality in online education. Maybe we have uh, a five minute break or so to get some coffee. Mm -hmm. That's already well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Shall we? Um, Meet again at uh, quarter past eleven. Perfect. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Should I put even a break? Give uh, a coffee parking. Oh, you have been muted. No. It was good for a break to have a new. That's that's very good. Yeah. It's well interesting, huh? So yeah. they've learned it a little better than than Josh. Ja, ja, zeker ook over een positie. En, en uh, ik wist niet dat ze zoveel studenten in neer gaan hadden. Geloof ik dat. Ja. 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 ja, het geeft, het geeft toch wel. Allee, ja, met zo'n contact. Zo, dit was ook de bedoeling van die local seminars: van, van een, een bilateraal contact te hebben. En van daar ook veel van, van de leden te, te leren en van te zien uh, hoe ze het doen en welke.